This is the latest version of Prusa Slicer, and the stuff you can do in this software now is quite frankly insane. You told me a couple years ago I'd have this much control over my 3D printing settings, and it was free, I probably wouldn't have believed you, but here we are. So in this video, I'll be going through five different ways you can power up your printing experience using Prusa Slicer. Try to say that 10 times fast. Let's get started. How's it going guys? Angus here from Maker's Muse and welcome back to another 3D Printing 101. Now this is Prusa Slicer 2.4.1. It's the latest version as of time of recording and the stuff you can do in the software, it, it's, it's just crazy. So as some of you may know, I used to use Simplify 3D a lot back in the day and used to be able to do custom settings based on parts and based on separate layers, which was kind of its selling point. But we've gotten to a point now where Prusa Slicer offers that and a whole raft of other additional settings in a really easy to use package that's free. You don't need a Prusa printer to use Prusa Slicer. In fact, the wizard actually has all these different printers from other manufacturers built in with settings you can use right off the bat to get you started. Now I've been using Prusa Slicer a lot lately to do some really advanced stuff, printing a whole plate of parts with different settings for each part. For example, some parts might need a brim, some might need thicker walls, some might need higher or lower infill, and some might need different layer heights at different heights of the print. And you can do all of this stuff and more in Prusa Slicer. So let's talk about how you can do it for your projects too, starting with number one, doing custom settings per object. So here I have a tray of a few prints for a project I'm putting together, and each of these needs different settings. So for example, this bolt here, has a very small contact area of the bed, so I want to put a brim on it. But this gear, I don't want a brim because it's going to be a pain to remove after the print's done, and it might ruin the profile of that gear teeth. So how do you add just a brim to one part and not the other? Well, that's by using the per object settings. So how do you add custom slicer settings to each object? Well, it's really simple. You select the object you want to add custom settings to, and then here on the right hand side, you want to click under editing, select that. Then you scroll right down to add settings. And then I want skirt and brim. And I want to show brim width. Okay. And then I can say, okay, I want the brim to be five millimeters across like that slice. And as simple as that, it's given a brim to just that object and none of the others. So this part will be securely held in place, which is what I want, but the other parts won't have the brim, which might be a pain to remove. This in itself is hugely valuable, because I'm sure many of you have sent files to the printer where you've had to select brim for everything, which is a pain to remove, or a brim for nothing, but some of the parts don't have quite enough bed adhesion to stay in place and break free. So you can add the brim to just the parts you want to hold them in place, versus everything and it's a compromise. But with per object settings, you can get so much more complex. So for example, what I've gone ahead and done is for these bolts, I've added a infill density of zero. So I've gotten rid of any infill, but I've made the perimeters five. So that makes the parts have a thicker wall and therefore stronger. But then for example, with that part we've added a brim to, I've then gone ahead and added a uh, layer height object setting to change layer height down to 0.15, whereas everything else is 0.25, because I want that dome and the thread to be cleaner. So then when we slice this, you can see that the bolts have no infill, but they're thicker, but the layer height of this smaller part is finer than the layer height of those other parts. Okay, so you know how to change the per object settings, but what if you wanna change settings within an object? Well, there's different ways to do that too. So I'm gonna start with the height range modifier. This is the easiest to understand, and again, very, very handy in circumstances like this. For example, with these bolts, where the thread might need a finer layer height, but the rest of the shaft you can print quicker with a coarser layer height. So I'm just gonna delete the per object settings for now. You can use them interchangeably, but I'm just gonna delete it for uh, demonstration. Go to edit, and we're gonna select height range modifier. So with this, you can select at what height you want to change what settings. So I'm gonna move this up to, let's see what 35 looks to looks like. A uh, little bit too low. So that's 38, and then let's see, like 60. That'll take us above the part that looks fine to me. Okay. And then I'm going to change the layer height at 
this height, which I want to change down to 0.15, like that. And as simple as that, we have a height range modifier where the layer height changes from 0.25 to 0.15 where the threads are to get higher detail. You can change all sorts of settings using the height range modifier. You don't just have to change your layer height, you can change your infill percentage or type, you can change your perimeters, you can even add uh, the fuzzy skin option which was added recently, you can implement ironing, change speeds, extrusion width, all sorts of settings can be modified using the height range modifier. And I think it's important to mention that Precious Slice doesn't care if different objects printed at the same time have different layer heights, it just prints them uh, layer by layer together and just sort of works it all out. It doesn't really care if one sliced at 0.25 and one sliced at 0.15 or variable layer heights because it just works it out layer by layer without any collisions. It's actually quite clever. But that's a good segue, I think, into another way you can change layer height and part settings using the variable layer height menu. Prusa Slicer implemented variable layer height ages ago. Uh, but it's still really, really powerful and a really useful way of getting the best of both worlds in terms of print speed and print quality. So, for example, I'm going to select this uh, part again we added the brim to, and I'm going to select variable layer height. Now, this lets you on this graph here uh, add more detail or take away detail in terms of your layer height. So, uh, by adding detail, you're adding more layers, which means it'll take longer. There's uh, finer layers, or if you make the print coarser with uh, like thicker layers, it's quicker, but you get less detail. So it actually has an adaptive mode, which has been there for a while, which is like a really good quick way of figuring out where some areas might need uh, finer or coarser layer heights. So let's click adaptive. Uh, and that's pretty interesting. It's saying that the print itself uh, could be done with a lot coarser layer heights, except for some areas like this edge here. Personally, I would have gone with some finer layer heights down the bottom here just because it's a thread, like that. I'm gonna do that, so I have very fine threads, and then the rest of it's coarser for higher printing speed. And then I'm gonna slice this. And here we have some very fine threads, possibly too fine, I'm not sure what layer height that is. And then it gets coarser for the top. Again, you could make that finer if you wanted a nicer finish on that peak. But by using the variable layer height uh, menu, you can also get that added degree of control over parts of the print you want to print quicker and parts of the print you want to print with higher detail. Okay, yeah, so I just went back to the variable layer height menu and the threads were 0.07 millimeters, which is probably a bit too ridiculous. Uh, so I can, let me just increase the edit area here. I can probably reduce those down to something a bit more reasonable, like 0.1. That probably makes a bit more sense. Uh, and then you can smooth it using the shift and right mouse button. So that's probably a bit more reasonable. It's uh, a lot more organic, less control, I suppose, than the layer height modifier, which I personally prefer. But for organic models, the variable layer height menu is where it's at. Alrighty, the next way to change your part settings, and one way, again, that's very powerful, but a little bit of a pain to set up, is using modifiers. These are physical geometries that intersect your model in certain areas, and you can assign different settings to those intersections to change how your parts printed. So here's how to use modifiers. So with this part here, let's say you printed it with the standard infill percentage. And uh, if you scroll down, it might not be quite high enough where the bearings are. Uh, so what we can do is right click and then add modifier. I'm gonna add a cylinder, bring it in here. Uh, let's change the size of this. To that's fine, looks good. I'm gonna move it over that area. Then here on the right, we can go and change the object settings. And then I'm gonna change the infill. So for this, I'm gonna change the infill to like 80% um, cubic, and then slice. And what that modifier has done is anywhere the cylinder intersected the object, it's changed the settings that I wanted it to change. So it's made the infill percentage much higher, which means in this area where that uh, bearing's gonna be, there's going to be more infill without making the whole part have higher infill. 
because that's not really necessary. It takes longer, uses more material, etc., etc. And you're not just limited to using the primitives built in the Prusa Slicer to do this. You can bring in your own meshes. So if you're very clever with your design, you can design meshes that are intended for use as modifiers to modify certain areas very precisely in your print to print differently. Uh, I just brought in this gear part again, uh, just as an example. But for example, with this, I can go and then say I want to change the perimeters to like four. And then what it'll do is that area where the gear intersects it's going to add perimeters in. You see there, it's added them in like that. But that might be strategic in your design for an area that needs more strength, for an insert, like a nut insert, or where parts hinge off others. Uh, and it's just, it's really powerful, but again, a little bit finicky to use. So I don't see it used a whole lot, but you should definitely try it for your more advanced 3D printing projects. Okay, the final thing I want to talk about is arranging and exporting. So I'm just going to delete everything. And what I'm going to do is go to a folder and bring everything in from that folder, like this. Bam, all right. If you haven't picked up, this is an Air Raid Siren, I'm printing it right now, a lot of parts to print. So if I click Arrange, you'll notice that it arranges as many parts as it possibly can on the print bed. Uh, there's a warning which says an object outside your print area was detected, fine. But what it does, which is interesting, is it arranges all the other parts in the same area as the print bed, but off it, but they're still nicely arranged. So go ahead and slice it and you'll get this horrible <laughs> blood red background and you might have some issues where the skirt uh, overruns the print area. I really think that should be allowed for in the settings but if you have a pre-extrude you don't need a skirt just disable that and you'll have no issues. But what's really cool is because Prusa Slicers nested these parts in like separate plates you can just go and select everything with Control A and then uh, move and just slide over another plate till it goes green. And then slice that. And again, you're good to go. Maybe disable the skirt. And then again, control A, move it over. And you can very, very quickly smash out an entire project worth of G code in separate plates and then save them. Now, I would love for the ability in the export or slicing to say slice multiple plates. Uh, that would be really cool. Maybe I'm asking too much, but the idea where you'd have like different plates loaded up and then when you export, you export separate G code of each plate. That would be awesome. Don't know if it's possible. I did really try to look. I don't think it is, but currently this works quite well. But there is one more really cool thing about auto arrange that you might not be aware of. And that's if you right click it, you can actually change some of the settings. So it seems to be six millimeter spacing is by default. That's actually quite a large gap if you have a really well tuned printer. So you can reduce that down to, I don't know, let's go two millimeters. And then there's enable rotations. Now it says slow because it's a bit more of the, the calculations involved to try to fit parts in and nest them in by rotating them. It's a bit more computationally intensive than just ranging them around without rotations. But if you enable that, and then we click arrange, you can fit parts in just a little bit tighter. By doing this, you get just that little extra bit of squeeze that might allow you to fit that extra nut or bolt into your print run that otherwise wouldn't have fitted. However, there is one thing that auto arrange in Prusa Slicer cannot do, and I'm not sure it's ever going to be able to do. Uh, and if you're looking at this plate, it might be straightforward, obvious to you, but I'll give you a second to think about it. It can't see these areas here inside the parts. It can't see these internal areas of parts. It just, in the arranging algorithm, sees the external boundaries and arranges around that. So for example, if you're printing lots of small parts, you could manually print them inside these larger parts. Uh, no problem at all, as long as there's gaps, totally go for it and you get a lot more bang for your buck in terms of your print area. But Prusa Slicer cannot see this and it will not arrange to do this. It will slice and print totally fine, but it will not auto arrange it. And that's just how it is. And it's a small quirk, but nothing too bad. I'm not going to complain considering the incredible features we currently get out of the software for free. Because again, you don't need to own a Prusa printer to use Prusa Slicer. It works on pretty much any 3D printer on the market that can just accept standard G code. And I just, I really appreciate it existing because it makes my life 
so much easier. If you found this video useful, then please consider subscribing to Makers Muse. It's my aim to empower your creativity through technology. And I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Catch you later, guys. Bye.